Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as China, where we have been getting off to a really, really good game. I was going to say something else there, and my brain, <laughs> you know, it's the first 30 seconds of a YouTube video, you got to keep it clean, you know what I mean? But yeah, things, things are going really, really well in this game, and I think our goal this episode is to get Conservation, the Civic over here, uh, which will turn all of our walls into tourism based on the level of the walls that we get. If we have level one walls, we'll get one tourism. If we have medieval walls, we'll get three tourism. And if we have renaissance walls, we'll get six tourism. That six tourism per city is pretty valuable, especially considering with the combination of the uh, World Congress giving us 100% production towards buildings in the city center and the uh, Limes card, we are now building walls three times as fast as we normally should, which essentially means that they are one third the price. They are one third the price. I am going to go ahead and get an alliance if I can with Gorgo. Who I really want an alliance with though is Egypt because they are worth big money if you can get yourself an alliance here. And the reason for that is if I go to my trade routes, look at these trade routes to Egypt, okay? Uh, 26 gold, 20 gold trade routes. Those are super valuable. And I definitely need to get more trade routes as the game goes on. Um, yeah, but we've got fully built Renaissance walls in our in our capital. I would really like to get the factory that's potentially, uh, if we look at this capital, I believe I have the city overlap thing here and I can go with the range. And I hover over this. You can see every city in red is hit by this um hit by this factory but I also have access to Mexico City and that's going to give me an extra three tiles so if I come back in here and I go back to city overlap and I set this to nine tiles and I hit the old range now you can see that it's hitting one two three four five six seven eight nine different cities so that's nine times three is 27 production plus another three when the factory is powered is tw another 27 production that's 54 production across my entire empire from a single factory all right so this is like one of the highest value like you are like i want you to really drink that in okay this is going to give me 27 production right now and once i have the coal power plant it's going to give me another 27 production it is the most cost-effective building in the entire game, as it stands right now. Um, yeah, but I'm going for Renaissance Walls. Very Theatre Square light kind of game. But the great thing about Theatre Squares is you can always get them late and then trade for the works. Now, we are going to have a little bit of an appeal problem in here. Now, hmm. I have to think about some things. Let's go ahead and do a search for hills. And you can see there's like a little bit of land here. We could do some seaside resorts on and maybe a chunk over here, depending on how we do things. Uh, okay, so I need to plan this island. Let's go for a plantation here. Sorry, not a plantation. This is going to be a lumber mill. And I I'm trying to plan my city out in order to maximize the total amount of tourism I can get. And I want to get the Eiffel Tower, plus I want to get the Crystal Redden Tour if I can. So if that all works out for me, then hopefully this city will look a little bit like this. If I get the Crystal Red Tour plus the... Now this is going to be unimproved, so I'm going to go ahead and put a big old X. I need like an X marker or something. This. Do not improve this tile. Yeah, so the ideal scenario here is if we can get this city filled with as many seaside resorts as possible. And hopefully it'll look a little bit like this. We will be getting plus two appeal across my empire from... Uh, Eiffel Tower if we can get it and maybe if we could go for I don't know like if we put a holy site there that's another plus one appeal to all adjacent tiles we could go for a I don't know, uh, entertainment complex that's another plus one appeal we could do something like this we'll figure it all out uh, when the time comes but this is kind of like the direction I want the city to go in it's not exactly what I want it to do but it's the, the direction that I want it to go in and that's the fundamental principle that I'm following okay Shen Yang doing a great job we could go for St. Basil's here but it's not in the tundra so it seems a little bit worthless to go for St. Basil's aside from the 100% religious tourism which is kind of interesting I'd be more interested in if I could get an actual tundra city which would be pretty rare I would say I could also quickly pick up a nine turn Petra which is kind of like getting a great work at this point so a nine turn Petra it's like building a great work alternatively I could work on my industry my theater square I could work on my uh entertainment complex i think i'm going to go for the theater square i want those great people points to start rolling in, in now we kind of hung around we're waiting for those a long time now and we need them to we need them to start coming on through but yeah i'm doing a really good job i feel like of getting my empire to where it needs to be to to, to be churning along bringing up the big bucks all right barb camp cleared yoink 
Um, I, I am going to need units of some kind to clear this um, thing. And maybe a frigate is the right unit for the job. Can I make enough money to get a frigate? Sell off some of my resources. 300 gold from you. 150 from you. 75 from you. A little bit from you. And the frigate costs... Ah, oh, we can just, just afford a frigate. But I got to wait for more nighter. I'll get the privateer and use it to clear this island. So we've got our temple air and... Uh, Holy site in Changsha, which is giving us faith. Remember, my faith gets converted into good things. Plus, this is also going to give us passive religious pressure in this area, which is also something that we want. This is going to be a forest. So I want to be careful about how exactly I completely like obliterate my empire and that I don't kill tiles that I shouldn't. I do like researching colonialism because now it means all my fishing boats are getting plus one production in the late game. That's a fun time to pick up. Or a fun ability to pick up, rather. Oh, Giant's Causeway. God, Giant's Causeway. It's such a cool, it's such a cool natural wonder because it actually changes the game you play. And I, I think, I think one of the things I really like about Civ is that there's so many things that actually change your like, the fundamental way that you interact with the game is changed when you have them. A moderate flood, but it is blocked hopefully by a dam that we have not yet built. There's colonialism. There's some things in here that we can make use of like Raj. We could theoretically plug in Raj over Autocratic Legacy. It could be better. I think there is an argument here that Raj is better than Triangular Trade at this point current time it's a lot of science a lot of culture a lot of faith and i think that makes a really strong argument for that so we got our renaissance walls in beijing i don't need the factory and coal power plant in here i just wanted the industrial zone because there was a whole bunch of things getting attached to it like the canal and the dam and i will go ahead and build the dam and the canal i had planned to use military engineers for this actually and maybe i should i would have to build an armory in this city nobody's built the alhambra or the huey let's go for the huey never mind the armory we got to build wonders, baby. We're all about those wonders. Wondrous, wondrous wonders. Now, privateers do a good job of clearing out these barb camps. Like they, you know, they don't do the most damage, but they do it without getting counterattacked. And that's the important thing. One thing I definitely need to make sure that I'm doing is as long as people aren't denouncing me, I get open borders with them. Although Medelik looks like he's denouncing me, unfortunately. But the Gaul are not. So I can make friends with him. Open, no open borders, open borders, open borders. Yeah, we're good on open borders. I kind of wish there was a simpler way to keep track of open borders. It's kind of a fiddly thing to keep a, keep an eye on. I really like the way this map was laid out, by the way, with like three people on this one island and then one person on this kind of island and then four people over on this island. It, it feels very nice. We do have an archaeological museum. We are about to get natural history. Let's go ahead and pick up that harbor, although medieval walls first, actually, and then we can get an archaeologist online. Uh, this shipyard should be bought, so I'll go ahead and get the Renaissance walls up. Yeah, I'm just on a walls kick because I'll build them in. I build them in a third the time that I should because of all the bonuses I've stacked together for wall building. It just works out really nicely for me. Ah, Shen. So, Shen, I would like you to steal gold for me. That's best use of your spies is stealing gold, in my opinion. It's like a practically an empty chunk of continent over here. Maybe I could sneak a settler around and yoink a few tiles. Be kind of interesting to exist on multiple continents. Privateer kill the Quadri Reem. It doesn't quite get the kill, but close enough. Finishing a lot of Renaissance walls. I don't love this. Continue the Great Zimbabwe. I don't remember what you were building. The Great Zimbabwe get reset here or something? I'm not sure. You definitely need a builder. There's like a mine or two you could get improved. Unfortunately, I need my gold for other things. I would love to be... I guess I could faith buy a builder. Got a ton of fate in the bank. I need to think about settling here. How am I going to get tourism from these islands? That's the thing. They're kind of awkwardly shaped. Unless I were to go, hey, diddle diddle. Let's say I settled on the sheep and I put a thing. I just, I just went for a national park in the city. Okay. There's a national park city. That's fine. That's acceptable. National park plus a trade route. That makes that city useful. Easy clap. Um, what about this one? How many national parks can I fit on this? I could fit one, one national park here. So I think I settle on salt to maximize our saltiness. And we go National Park here as well. And then we don't worry about the rest of the city. So let's go ahead and faith purchase a settler or two in the area to make that a reality. I know, it might sound a little bit crazy to get a... Here's the thing. It might be hard to get the appeal that I need in here. Maybe I just throw down... A... Well... Yeah, I think I'm just going to throw down a couple of great pieces of wall. <laughs> Some great wall pieces. Pieces of great wall. <laughs> ah, a little bit of a confusing dialogue tree. Greece hates me. Why? I don't understand. We're friends. We could be buddy buddy. <gasps> my quag, my carnival. There's steam power. We have access to railroads. We also have natural history. So the big thing for nat natural history is getting those relics. Let's have a look at antiquity site. Let's turn off pins. 
Okay, so we got some antiquity sites all around the place. The vast majority of them are over here by Egypt. That's definitely going to become a priority for me. Uh, let's have a look here. So we definitely want flight. Flight's our next big step, so we'll make our way there. This will allow tourism to be generated from improvements. We have our theater square in Shenyang. I would love to build the hermitage. That just seems like fun to build the hermitage. But then again, it's so much cheaper to go like amphitheater, archaeological museum. <laughs> it's, so ch it's so much cheaper to build districts and stuff. Uh, I will go for the market to get the extra trade route. I thought I had taken suzerainty of Granada, and I will take suzerainty of Granada just to give me more exploration potential. All right, my settlers are in the water. I'm getting a little bit of conversion stuff over here. I think I'll save my Inquisition for the next era, however. That'll be when I need the era score. I don't need the era score right now because I'm already, like, I'm already hitting a golden age and it's only 10 turns left in this era, so I don't need any more era score right now. All right, we got a factory in the capital. Remember, that's 27 production across my empire. A huge production boost. I shaved, like, six turns off the Great Zimbabwe and it should do the same thing when I finish the coal power plant. Maybe not exactly the same, but of a similar scale. It's kind of crazy to be settling two cities for the same amount of um, for the same amount of national parks. Like I'm settling two cities just for two national parks. Usually you're getting a lot more national park value from your late game cities. It's just the way the cookie crumbled, you know? Menelik is denouncing me again. Culture wise, we're at 18 out of 108 tourists, which is a pretty good milestone to hit. I definitely need my consulate at my chancery. So I'm going to go ahead and buy those with gold to get them going. I could go for the new Venetian Arsenal and the Torre de Belim. I mean, if I'm going for a water park in here, I should get as many of these coastal wonders as possible. Venetian Arsenal it is, boys. And Torre de Belim it is. That's what we're working on in here. Um, I should quickly grab an art museum. Very, very quickly. Grab that art museum so I have somewhere to put the upcoming artist that I'm not too far away from getting. Actually, I'm miles away from getting an artist. Never mind. I thought I was close. <laughs> I neglected my... <laughs> Theater squares this game just a little. Just a little. Zhang He gives you a free trader. Uh, four trade routes to the city provide plus two gold to both cities. Then I want him to go to Beijing. Better if people are trading with Beijing than any of my other cities. Let's buy a few builders, actually. I've also got room for traders, and I'm mostly looking for gold right now. Although I do want to think a little bit about making sure I have trade routes with both Ethiopia and Gaul. So I think I want to make sure at a minimum that I have those. I have Walata. But I'm missing Ethiopia and Gaul, which means I need more trade routes. Let's prioritize getting the granary up in the city so the city can continue to grow. Renaissance era ends in seven turns. Shen Yang got an amphitheater. It's got a, it's got a trade route. It's got a theater square. The hell else does it need? Probably nothing, actually. Let's grab the archaeological museum so we can go for archaeological villages. Pagoda in Changsha. This is another theater square city, I feel. Ah, I don't remember if you can build seaside resorts beside lakes. That's something I don't remember. I don't remember if you can do that or not. I guess it's something I'll find out in the near future because I'm not too far away from flight and radio, which has seaside resorts. So I'm looking for a trade with Gondar. There it is. That's 25% extra tourism against him. And then I'm looking for a trade with, yes, you. That's another 25% tourism against you. So I'm slowly getting up to now a reasonable tourism number. I should start seeing my tourism numbers go up. Now I would like a trade route with a player I don't have a trade route with, which would be like Germany or Scotland. Yeah, Haddington. Trade with Haddington? Perfect. So I think I have a trade route with nearly every player in the game right now, except for Gorgo, Germany. Yeah, just Gorgo and Germany. Otherwise, I need to get trade routes, and, or uh, not trade routes, sorry, open borders with everyone. Um, the reason being, if you come over here to the culture victory screen, click this button, world rankings, go to culture, hover over people. You can see here 25% extra tourism for open borders, which helps quite a bit, let me tell you, over the course of a game. Um, although, in order for it to be a full 25% tourism across your entire empire, you need to get open borders with every single sieve in the game, which is a little bit difficult to achieve, um, but you, you can make it work. Think of it this way. If there's 10 other players in the game... Okay, every time you get an open borders with another player, that is a 2.5% increase in your total tourism. So you take the number of players in the game and you divide it by the number of players, or you, you divide the number of people you have trade, route with, trade routes with by the number of people in the game and you get your percentage boost. And then you multiply that by 25. So if you have like 0.5 multiplied by 25, you end up with 12.5% boosted. I don't know. That makes sense to me. I don't know if I explained it well. Number, number, more people equal bigger number, equal bigger improvement. I guess I just like intuitively kind of understand these numbers. Um, 
but I don't intuitively know how to explain them. Mont Saint Michel, another city gets a thing, and all my guys get martyr now, so I can generate relics if I so chose. Not that I care that much, to be honest with you. See, Renaissance walls in Jurong. I would love to get a shipyard. There's nothing else to build in here except for builders. I guess you just spam me a few builders. Got nothing else to do with you. The city exists only to generate tourism from flight. Right, let's continuously purchase builders to send out to be in position to create the national parks that I need when I unlock national parks in four turns. Speaking of which, probably be a good idea to lay out the national parks that I need. The marsh stuff here is a little bit annoying. Right here, there's potential. I mean, if I replace this with a forest and I go national park right there, we could maybe do something. I'm going to focus on getting the national parks over here and stuff first in the less important cities, of course. Giga Chad, I always improve my worst cities first. Slowly clearing out this barb camp, we'll be able to settle this island. And this is actually a great island for tourism. Potential for, like if I were to settle on, oh, I don't know, this tile right here. There's a national park here, easy, right? That's just an easy clap. That's a freebie. And then there's a national park here as well, if I so chose. And then there's a preserve or something on this tile. If we wanted to play, we want to play the fun way. Get yourself a preserve, and then there's just a whole bunch of seaside resorts along the coast. I mean, sure, we have to give up a tea, but I mean, tea is only okay. It's only just okay. Who cares about tea? Uh, like, name and shame your local tea enjoyer. I'm going to be honest with you. Tea enjoyers, they're not welcome. Okay. Let's not bully tea enjoyers too much. Right? I like tea. I like, look, look, I'm, a I'm going to admit it. I admit it right here, right now. You can clip it. You can send it to people. Do whatever you want. I'm going to admit it. I, I enjoy tea on the occasion. I enjoy the occasional tea. Let's get a zoo, huge boost to amenities, hopefully bring up our happiness of our cities, and then we'll go for like amphitheaters and stuff. Remember, also, uh, bonus meme, city overlap, you can see here, this entertainment district overlaps five cities, but with a range of boop, 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 nine, which we have, because remember we have Mexico City, this overlaps, uh, is that actually, wait, is that actually 10 cities that this overlaps? Is that actually 10 cities? There's no way. I think it actually is 10 cities that this overlaps. So, that, so this zoo, right, that gives plus one amenity to all cities within range, that's worth 10 amenities. That's two and a half luxuries worth of, a, worth of amenities. Put that in perspective. Put that in your pipe and give it an old schmo. I wonder if I can get a trade route with Germany from Wuhan. Let's try it. It would be, be good if we could. It'd be good if we could. One trick, it's like, I haven't found there to be much of an advantage for keeping old growth forest. I've often found that it's almost worth it to just chop it and then replant. Because in terms of like the value you get versus the tourism you get, it's just like, it just works out being like, it's not the most valuable thing to keep old, to keep old growth forest in. You're hanging around here to build a national park, old god obelisk granary into uh, a plus four harbor. Yes, please. All right, we can use the privateer, the coastally raid. That means that barb clamp is cleared. I don't like this. I'm going to spawn an apostle so that I have the institution of inquisition available to me when I so need it. We've got a market in here. I really do need to build the Taj Mahal and the Patala Palace, ideally. Plus one diplomatic victory card, actually. That's pretty pogged. Can I build it in my capital? How fast can I build it? I cannot build it in the capital. I could build the Taj Mahal, though. Ooh. Can I afford to lose tiles? Not really. My capital is very constrained for tiles. I could maybe lose this river tile. I could go for Bolshoi Theater, Hermitage, Taj Mahal. Oh, right. Ruhr Valley. Yeah, I should totally build that. <laughs> Oops. Hey, maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, just totally forget that one of the most important wonders in the game is in the game. Uh, let's do a Patala Palace right there. It's a 42 turn Patala Palace, but I will be able to improve the production in the city in the coming months. Well, coming years, right? Because it's uh conservation is here soon tm looks like thebes is flipping independent i'm just flipping cities like a god today my spy successfully evaded capture but didn't steal gold which is like like don't come home empty-handed you know what i mean i sit you out here with a mission and you're gonna come home with nothing bro look think of all the money and resources i put into training you and this is how you disappoint me i am a disappoint incredible oh uh germany and he, oh, I'm just out of range of trading with Germany. Well, I may as well go for more money and plug it into Beijing then. A lot of little coastal tundra-y islands, which are not really great for generating tourism as far as I'm concerned. 
All right, we got our first big harbor, and we got scientific theory. I don't think we're going to be getting Oxford University this game. Yeah. Yeah, looks like that bad boy's already gone. Zhao Dong, on the other hand, has potential to build a lot of wonders. A Statue of Liberty is probably worth it. I'll go like lighthouse shipyard into maybe one of these coastal wonders. I'm expecting my trade routes to, to, to climb back up to a more reasonable level over the next few turns. I actually cannot wait. Oh man, look at that gold. Hold on though, I gotta make sure, can I touch or reach anywhere that I should? No, I'm gonna take that huge rack of death gold. Look at that, 22 gold per turn, yoink. Feels like stealing, even though I'm not. I got builders in position all around the world for when we finish cons uh, conservation, we are going to reforest the hell out of Earth, all right? We're going to make Theodore Roosevelt proud with our national forest, okay? You come in here, you chop that jungle. Listen, it's jungle, it's not forest, it doesn't count. But we're going to reforest here, we're going to put a lumber mill on it. We're going to reforest here and not put a lumber mill on it. I definitely need to be purchasing a builder basically every single round here to sustain this. But hey, look, in these newly freshly settled cities, lumber mill. Well, forest, and that appeal is going to keep going up. Um, speaking of, boop, boop, let's buy ourselves a naturalist, and we'll do the same here. Well, I want to wait until I have that sheep deleted first. I don't want to, like, leave a sheep on that tile. Let's go for Crystal Red Tor. It's probably going to be the last wonder that my capital builds. Crystal Red Tor, of course, is incredibly important because it gives you a uh, doubled tourism output from seaside resorts across your empire. And we have a lot of seaside resort potential in my empire. So that's kind of like giving you an idea of the direction we're going. I'm going to produce a few builders in these newly settled cities. Districts I'm not too worried about in these new cities. Just like snagging a few builders, get those tiles improved because I just need so many builder charges. Um, this one actually is ready for a um a naturalist so i can just straight up go naturalist normally i would chop these but i'm going to leave these ones in place however i am going to wait until this era is done before i plant down my natural my national forests and that's just that's just common sense because you get like three or four uh you get three or four what's the word here oh my god you know what the word is the word is the bird the bird is the word and the word is bird era score you get era score for planting down national parks and you get a lot of era score for planting down national parks and i mean a lot renaissance era is done in one turn archaeological museum let's get the archaeologist um i'm holding steady oh yoink take back that scissor tea off menelik you cannot have it me Melik. all right boom there's our national park feels good man we overshot our golden age by 20 points but i can live with that because I, I wouldn't consider that a mistake. Now, here's the question. Do we buy a few settlers and go yoink a few, of the, a little bit of this land over here? I think we do. I think we go through and we buy as many settlers as we can before this era dies. I think we can get three clean settlers here to go yoink this land with the help of a caravel and a privateer. Priviet. Cool thing about national parks is you can actually plant woods in national parks, but you can't harvest bonus resources. So make sure you get rid of your bonus resources before you... Oh, screw... Feck, I meant to wait a turn on that one. It's okay, it's not gonna... It's not gonna break the bank. I was so excited to explain to you the mechanics of national parks that I completely screwed myself out of getting, like, optimal era score. <laughs> Damn. Sometimes you get excited and you jump the gun, man, you know? Uh, okay, so we're gonna make a dedication. We can't do dedications to monumentality anymore but i think we got massive value out of monumentality anyway for me right now i think it's reform the coinage or heartbeat of steam reform the coinage would give me a ton of gold but i feel like heartbeat of the steam gives me the production that i need especially because i'm building a couple of like late game wonders shave a turn or two off them is quite nice uh let's go ahead and purchase the shipyard in zhao dong and then we'll come down here and get the archaeologist and then we'll look into maybe getting a wonder hey aya sophia seems like it would be a good one to pick up so we'll get to work on that one uh, well, dear, well, do you know what I'm going to do with this city? Uh, probably get an aqueduct in here to let it grow. Let it grow. I got my spy back, but of course, naturally, the only thing I care about is stealing gold. So make your way back to Ted Mecca where you can steal gold. Getting my lumber mills down. My, my builders don't have extra movement anymore, Sag. Which means maybe it's time for a change in government. I'm actually pretty happy with my government right now. It's not perfect. It could be optimized. 
But I think for what I'm trying to do, which is a very generalist build, and I'm not trying to like specifically hardcore go for a specific thing because I'm playing on Emperor. Remember, I'm not playing on maximum difficulty, so I can kind of take like a little bit more of a meandering path to victory. Um, we can make this work. Let's launch our Inquisition. So now we can get Inquisitors to clear out any, you know, religious shenanigans. And uh, we can go ahead and wipe the floor with these barbs. Yoink. This island is very difficult to settle. I'll be real with you. Let's harvest this. Faith purchase. Oh, I can't afford a naturalist. That's okay. That's okay. I totally planted both of my national parks before I meant to, by the way. Uh, and now I feel like a massive ding dong. There you go. I just planted a forest inside a national park that already existed. I'm not a liar. I'm telling the truth. I promise. Hey, oh, Huey Toakali. That's plus one amenity for each lake tile within one tile of Huey Toakali. And my lake tiles are better. Pretty cool. Alhambra, still available? No, somebody got Alhambra. Go for Taj. Oh. Oh, it's a plus six theater square. Why, I don't mind if I do. I don't even care if I crushed a marsh tile. I live with myself, okay? I'll sleep like a baby crushing a marsh tile for a plus six theater square. You best believe it. Um, having a little bit of a think. There's room for another national park here. Let's make sure Shen Yang owns all the tiles it needs to. Yeah, Shen Yang, go ahead and get that naturalist to be planted in there. Ao, 15 population capital. Very nice. And we got nationalism, which is kind of cool. We can build another spy off the back of nationalism. We get our very first actual great writer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can promote you now with Divine Architect, so we can buy Districts with Faith, which is a great use of Moksha. Um, speaking of which, do we want to buy a District with Faith in here? Uh, let's see... Probably not. Where would I use Moksha is my question. Where would I put Moksha? Where can I make use of him? Probably in Yi Yang, actually. If I put him in Yi Yang, I can buy the Harbor easily. Yi! Yang. I'm up to 290 tourism, which is starting to feel like a pretty good clip. Like we're making progress on the tourism victory real fast. A real comfy kind of game. Now, my question is, I'm at 29 out of 129. Gorgo is earning 84 culture per turn. I'm making about 290 tourism per turn. I'm not too far off from picking up flight as well as seaside resorts and computers. I'm also not too far from picking up Crystal Redentor. I could probably win this pretty quickly here. This should be a pretty quick victory. Um, yeah, I love you all very much, though. I hope you guys are enjoying watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.